Hello, my name is Henriette Harmse. I am the lead developer for the EBI ontology tools. In this short training video, I will explain how our, our ontology tools can help data harmonization and enrichment for the Seneca project. Just to remind us quickly about what the Seneca project try to achieve. Uh, the first thing is that it tries to integrate cohort level metadata across um, nations and across continents. Now this integration effort by itself introduces a number of technical challenges and the specific in technical challenge that I will try to address in this short training video is that of data harmonization and enrichment. So what are the problems that we can ex um, expect with regards to data harmonization? So typical problem is that you could sit in a situation where you have different strings of text referring to the same concept, or you could um, like here's the example shown on the left hand side is the different ways in which um, strings of text can be used to express the concept female. Then you could also have that you have the same string of text representing different concepts. So for instance, a tibia of a human is different to that of a tibia of a fly. But then also you could have that tibia refers to a genus of sea snails, which of course again is different to tibia in a human and in a fly. So how do we address this terminology concern? And this is what brings us to semantic web technologies. Now, semantic web technologies tries to address this concern at a global level. And one of the key concepts within the um, semantic web technologies is that of ontologies. And you can see ontologies as for um, controlled vocabularies on steroids. And the reason why I say that is because um, each concept and relation within an ontology is identified by um, a globally unique identifier. The ontology itself is defined in a machine readable syntax. And then um, there's a generic data model for the content. And that is referred to as RDF triples. So this can allow you to express arbitrary relations between um, concepts. So you could say that, um, that you have a, sub a subject that is associated with the object via a predicate. And this is referred to as um, RDF triples. Um, and RDF triples are typically stored in an RDF triple store. Now to query an RDF triple store, this is referred to, um, uh, you can use the Sparkle query language. And you can think of the Sparkle query language as similar to what SQL is to relational databases. That's what Sparkle is to RDF triple stores. Then um, also ontologies are um, based on a formal semantics um, but that is based in mathematical logic. The advantage of that is that it allows you to uh, use, make use of artificial intelligence reasoning procedures that can infer implicit knowledge from explicitly stated knowledge within the ontology. Um, now, that if you look at um, JSON, LD, RDF, Sparkle, RDFS, and OWL, these are all um, W3C standards, and that means you can expect a certain amount of consensus regarding tools that you can use. Um, within the semantic web um, technology arena. Now, what is what do we mean by data harmonization and um, enrichment? So typically the data comes in, the, or the, particularly the metadata comes in as key value pairs. And what you want to do is be able to search for these key value pairs and arrive at a um, term within an ontology that uniquely identifies the concept that was conveyed by these um, strings of text. Now, the problem is, how do you do that? And that is where our tools come in. So we have Zuma, um, OXO, and OLS. Zuma is our ontology annotation service. 
OXO is our ontology mapping service, and OLS is our ontology lookup service that enables you to do searches across 200 plus ontologies in one place. So Zoomer, um, the main advantage of Zoomer is, or the main um, objective of Zoomer is to find, um, if you provide it with a string of text, to be able to um, give you curated uh, data back that will tell you which ontology term this uh, string of text maps to. And the benefit of that is that it allows biological curators to prioritize their creation, curation effort. So um, there's a confidence level for each of these mappings. And if they have a high level confidence mapping, then they know this is a um, mapping they can use without further investigation. But if they can't map um, a string of text and or they get a low confidence um, mapping, then they need to do some further investigation. Our um, OXO, our ontology mapping service, is used in a case where you already have been able to find an ontology term but it's not a term in an ontology that you are using or want to be using. So you want to be using a different ontology. So the question is now, how do you move from this ontology term in one ontology to a term in another ontology? Now, and then our ontology lookup service is a service that you can use once you've identified the ontology, um, the term that you want to use, you can go and look up this term in OLS and it will provide you with additional information regarding that uh, term based on the information that's um, already captured as part of the ontology. Now we're going to look at, in more detail to, at these tools. Now the first tool is Zoomer and you start out with a text area where you can type in the text searches that you're looking for. Each line in this text box will indicate a different search um, result that you're looking for. So in this example, we're looking for cardiomyopathy, where it's a phenotype. And when we do that search, we find that it maps with a high confidence level to, the, to EFO, that's the experimental factor ontology. Um, and because it's a high level of confidence, you could accept this um, mapping and the curators don't have to do further into investi investigation necessarily. But if it was a low confidence um, mapping, then they could go and do additional um, research and determine what is the most appropriate mapping. Then moving on to our OXO service. Once we found the term in Zoomer, what you can do now is um, if you want, uh, if this is a term in an ontology that you actually want a term in another ontology, you could use OXO. So in this case, we assume we have EFO, the EFO term as given there, and we map it, we want to map it to the human phenotype ontology. Now, um, the human phenotype ontology is also referred to as the HP ontology. And if we do this, we try to find this mapping, you'll see that we find it here at the top of the screen or the slide. And um, we can see it maps to the um, HP ontology. And if you want to find more information on this mapping and the particular the evidence for this mapping, you can click on the link for the evidence and that will give you this um, screen at the bottom we provide you with the different mappings. Now, if I just look at one example of it, um, which I've indicated here with the red arrows, is you can see that the EFO term maps to a term in UMLS, and the UMLS term maps to a term in HP. And this is a mapping at a distance of two, and we say it's a distance of two because we started with a term in EFO, we had to go to one ontology, which is the UMLS ontology. And from that ontology, we had to go to the HP ontology. That's why it's a distance two um, mapping. You could also search for a distance three mapping, 
but the numbers of uh, mappings tend to explode if you look for um, a distance of three. So that's something that's to keep in to consideration. Now, once you've found uh, the term that in the ontology that you want to look at, then you can go and search for this term in our ontology lookup service. And if you now find it within the ontology lookup service, we provide different uh, ways for you to visualize this information. So the one is the typical hierarchical um, representation. So that gives you all the parents um, of this concept and all the children of the concept. So where parents are, are more general concepts and the children uh, then, um, indicate more um, specific concepts. And then on the right hand side, we have a different representation. Now, in this case, it still only really indicate a hierarchical um, relations. That's the is uh, um, that you see on the arrows here. Um, but when there's um, other non-hierarchical relations for this concept, it will show up in the diagram on the right hand side and you can see these relationships. Now, in our, my closing remarks around this is just that um, we have front ends, web front ends for these tools, um, Zuma, OXO and OLS, which can be used by um, biological curators. But then we also provide programmatic access for all three of these services via REST APIs, which um, return JSON responses, which um, software developers can use to build pipelines or applications. And one of the advantages of using these tools is that they allow both biocurators and software developers to make use of semantic web technologies without having any deep understanding about semantic web technologies. So um, they can use this with interfaces that they are quite familiar with. Then lastly, what I would like to just point out is that these tools are very well used for harmonization and enrichment, both inside EBI and outside of EBI. Now, if I just look at some notable projects within EBI, we have the GWAS catalog, um, the Expression Atlas and Open Targets. These are projects that are making use of these services within EBI. Then lastly, I want to give you a number of references where if you're interested, you can go and have a look at these references and um, find out a bit more detail. Um, and that's all from me. Thank you and keep well.